607, Wednesday night at WPSL. You know it's time for the African-American scene with Rudy Howard. And uh, let me just remind you that the views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of WPSL, but the guests and the callers. That's what it's all about, folks. And you'll be able to uh, call in and chime in on the topics as well because it's time. Let's introduce our host from Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie. It's the African-American scene with Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Man, I really haven't had to do a whole lot of preparation here recently. I mean... You just turn on the news. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, every Wednesday I get here, there's like 42 things going on that, that uh, we can talk about. That's for sure. Uh... I got to tell you, uh, our president is is a real trip. He's a real in the exotic adventure. And and you know, I, here's what I want to throw out to my conservative listeners. For eight years, I guess I, I guess I've been on here longer than eight years because I was here the whole time that when President Obama ran. Mm, that's right. And you told me that. President Obama was dividing the nation. Did, how many times did I hear that over the, over those eight years, Cliff? Oh, you'd hear it from uh, just about every other caller for uh, eight years or so. Rudy, eight years. <laughs> that President Obama was dividing the nation. So now uh, I always wondered uh, how you came to that conclusion, but more importantly. Let's see if there's any honesty among you. Do you think that President Trump is dividing the nation? I think most of the polls think that he is. Mm. Be interested uh, to hear what you have to say about that. 3401590. He has been the most divisive president in my lifetime. The only person that I can think of that was more divisive than him was George Wallace, and he never became president. But he is divisive. He is reckless. He lacks intellectual thought. And I'll tell you, you if you really sit down and think now about what we had and what we now have, you may not like... You may not have liked President Obama's political philosophy, but he was all class. And he did not uh, swear upon the Koran when he was inaugurated. Yes, which they told me right. he would, right. yeah. And they were sure he was. They yeah. were most certain of it because they just <laughs> piled it right on us all. You know? Yes, they did. They told me that. Uh, uh, so I, I just want to tell you, he is complete class. And for those of you who may not have known this, per President Obama had a scandal-free presidency for the first time in like more than 30 years. Scandal-free. Now, there's some controversies that you can talk about, but for the most part, President Obama's uh, presidency was scandal-free. And we have Steve on line one. How you doing, Steve? Great. How are you? Okay. By the way, Obama saved America. People need to understand that. Just take a look at our economy, our unemployment, our position in the world when he came in and when he left. Yes, sir. And now Trump, who is dividing this country rapidly and tragically, uh, we made a bad mistake with him. I didn't vote for him. I'm an American. But uh, we, we made a bad mistake with this guy. And I'm going to get a shirt made up that says, how do you spell mental illness? Trump. And uh, send it to him. See if he likes that one. I, I got to tell you, man, you know, you know I, I, am, uh, I am deeply disturbed by... Because cause what he's done is, uh, which it started really with uh, Reagan, the dog whistles, you know. But he's more right. he's more like a foghorn right now. Right. And and he has, and it's funny, 
and you and I are close in age, the yep. the white supremacists and the KK that all, that had all been up, pushed down under the ground. Nobody have, even mentioned it anymore. He brought it up. Right now, all of a sudden, they they feel it's okay to come up out of the shadows, and uh, and and, sp- and make their point known now. And I will say this because I can't be a hypocrite. I think they have a right to speak. I may not like what they have to say. I may not like what they have to say, but I think they do have a right to speak. Yeah, I'll defend your right for freedom of speech, even if it's against me. Yes. I'll defend your right to say it. Uh, That's America. Yes, absolutely. But But he's going farther than that. Yes. You know, he's not just making comments. He's attacking people, degrading people. Uh, You don't do that. No. That, that, that's at best nonsensical and at worst mentally ill. Yeah. But this guy worries me. I've been in me battle too. before, and he worries me. He's never been. He's never served. Neither has his kids. Boy, they're real American. Did you see what Clapper said last night? I was looking at the news. Clapper, the former, uh, I think he was uh, NSI. And he said... He is very concerned about Donald Trump having access to nuclear weapons. He just said it again on CNN about five minutes ago. Oh, did he say it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. He said he was— It really worries him and disturbs him that Trump has access to the nuclear weapons. Yes, because— To the codes. And And I I agree with him because this guy is a— He's a fly off the handle guy. Yes, yes. You know, and that's you can be a fly off a handle guy if you're building a forty story building, um, but when you've got three hundred and thirty million lives in your hands, and you can start a nuclear war, you can't do that stuff. He scares you me too. Got to be presidential, professional, the whole bit. Well, and and and, and 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 you know what? Here's the other thing that that bothers me he's not very thoughtful no you know what i mean he just fires out of his behind you know without really thinking about what he's going to say and you can almost see it when you when if he gets off of that teleprompter uh when was it a monday night he was on the teleprompter right he almost sound like a normal person you remember when you remember when they used to bad mouth Barack Obama for using a teleprompter. Right, right. Flush Rimbaugh, the little furry drug addict from Palm Beach. Yep, 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 yep. He was all the time, oh, you can't read without a teleprompter. Well, what? well hey, Trump can't read with a teleprompter and a note in his pocket. That's true. And and listen, here's the other part of that. And some of the speechwriters have even said it. Most of that stuff that Obama delivered was written a lot of it was written by him right it wasn't he didn't have to have somebody come in the room and let him find and give him all the words he had plenty of words for himself but in any you event know who I'm, I'm scared for my daughter and granddaughter me too She's 38 the other one's 11 because of this guy me too you know i'm scared uh, for my scared. son yeah my 25 year old i'm i'm nervous for him uh, and I tell people when they start talking about Trump and how tough he is, I say, how old are your children? Oh, I got one twenty-two. I go, good. When he goes off in the next draft to fight the war, make sure you tell him you love him. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. And and listen, yeah, you know, the, the thing, and I've talked about this before, and you've probably heard me say this, we were looking for the wrong thing. Yep. Because, because, uh, President Obama didn't beat his chest and yell loud and, and and be flamboyant, we took that as a sign that he was weak, and he was anything but weak. Yeah, and he what, was smart. Yes. And what we have now is a world that's changed to the point where it's not uh, your bravado that's going to keep us safe. It's going to be some guy that's sitting in the back room that's learning how to work with internet and how to uh, uh, decode stuff that's trying to come over to sabotage us. 
that's the war. Yeah. That that is you the know, war right there. You know what got me today after his last night his attack of mental illness. Today he comes on TV and says, "Oh, there's no division too deep. Let's all be one people." Oh yeah, I heard that. Yes. I'm sitting there going, "Did he miss the med cut this morning or what?" <laughs> You know, I mean, God, last night he was calling everybody every name in the book. By the way, he has very small hands. Oh, uh, don't start that. <laughs> and, and today he's like, oh, let's all be best friends. So I'm going out and getting my hair dyed blonde because I'm almost 70. And then I'm going to have it styled like Lassie's butt. And I look just like him. <laughs> okay, Steve. Thanks a lot, man. You take care. Always Have a nice show. Okay, yeah, it's always a pleasure. He's my my faithful listener, Steve. I was surprised. You know, most of the listeners of WPSL are are, are conservative, but uh, our president is, is not a Republican. <coughs> is not necessarily a conservative, is he? No, I I don't think so. I, I don't uh, hear anybody coming to his rescue here. I mean, this is supposed to be. Like some of the conservative talk radio, and that's why you're not preaching to the choir when you do your show here. Right. That's but right. I, I, but I'm surprised though that that uh, our president doesn't get the support that a party would give him. You know. Well, here's the here here's the problem we have right now, and which is one of my my topics for tonight. We're at a point where it seems we're trying to crack down on people's right to stand up against things that disturb them. That bothers me. That bothers me greatly because this country was built on the fact that people stood up against things that bothered them. And, and it seems to me that there is a, an attempt to crack down on people that have that are dissenting. And and that's not that's not how you win the battle. You win the battle if if you have people that are dissenting against things that you believe. The the process is take a look at that that you believe if you're serving the people and find a path that brings more people into the process. You will never get everybody into the process, but if the majority of people are not with you and they're dissenting, they're telling you that there's something wrong with the philosophy that, that you espouse. And we have Carlos on line one. Yes, sir. What's up, buddy? Okay. I love your, I love your show. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of those uh, rare ones. I'm, I'm a minority but a conservative because uh, I came from a far-left country, and, and, and the left doesn't work. You, that Robin Hood story steal from the rich and give to the pro to the poor that doesn't work because the rich will just move on and leave you with high and dry with no jobs no nothing uh i i i voted for trump and i will vote again again for him because i i i don't want a republican punching bag like like george w bush was and all the other republicans all the, every time a republican's on, on he's, he's a racist he's this he's that i want somebody who fights back that's why i voted for him I had I had no qualms with Obama. The only thing when he stood up and he says, "Oh, your insurance, period," and they put a period at the end of that. He lied. But the media, you know, the media was far left. You had that guy, what's his name, uh, on on MSNBC, Hardball, whatever. Uh, when Chris when Matthews. Obama was yeah, when Obama was running, he said, "Oh, what are you going to call your first dog?" When 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 Trump was running, oh, what if a woman has an abortion? Are you going to send it to jail? The media, come on, the media is far left. Everybody, you got to be more than dumb not to see that the media is far left. So well, that's all I have to say. Thank you, young man. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, that that's that's a hit and run. But uh, I I I would have to say that uh, being completely objective, is there a tendency for the media to be left to center? I'd say the answer to that is yes. I think there is a tendency. But if you look traditionally over the history of this country, the issues left the center seem to be the ones that prevail in the end. Those are the issues that win in the end. And, and the argument that I have with my conservative friends is don't manipulate the system. 
win the battle of ideas. If if you are committed philosophically to a conservative principle and the vast majority of people do not believe in that conservative principle, then it's telling me that you have to make an adjustment. Otherwise, you would have the vast majority with you because, listen, that's the name of the game here. This republic democracy is the battle of the best ideas wins. And we have Jay on line one. Yes, sir. Okay, how you doing, Rudy, and uh, your calls? Uh, yeah, I was listening to the last caller, and I was just, I had to shake my head, and I'm not going to get into it, because he, he, I guess he has to live with it for himself and figure it out for himself. That's that's the you know way most people coming from different countries have to figure it out once they get here. I lived through, uh, what, you know, what's going on now and what happened in Virginia is nothing new to me. Uh, it's not very new, because I was just thinking about today's date. 20, uh, 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 28 years ago, a, a young man named Yusuf Hawkins, Oh, oh yeah. this, this is the anniversary of his death. Oh, yeah. 28 years ago, Yusuf Hawkins, a bright young African-American, he's about 17, honor student. This is in Brooklyn. This is, this is up south, Brooklyn, I re- New York. I remember section it. section of Brooklyn called Bensonhurst. Yeah. He went in that section of Brooklyn to buy a car, a used car. He never came out of there because the people, the young, the young men that were in there, they didn't think a black man should be in there. First thing they think about is he's coming there for one of the, for one of the young ladies. And so they shot and killed him for no reason. That that was the reason. That's why they killed him. Really, no reason. So we, we had we had a demonstration because the police were dragging their feet about finding out who did it, and you know prosecuting and going through the whole investigation. So we went in there, and Al Sharpton was leading uh, the, you know the demonstration. And most people don't understand when people march uh, for uh, to get justice uh, is to bring it to a att- bring attention to it, so the authorities and everybody else will know what we're doing. And what, what the cause is, and what we, what's the results we want? We want injustice. We want the criminal justice system to work for us, just like it worked for everybody else. So while we were marching, this wasn't Virginia or Mississippi. This is in up, up New York. They were throwing watermelon at us. They were calling us the N-word. You thought Virginia was bad? Back in the, this is not that long ago. So things have not really changed that much as far as the mindset of people. And a lot of them it was sat, sitting it was sitting dormant until this till, till the Trump became president with all his rhetoric, and then they came out of their bag. You notice that all those folks who were marching down in Virginia, and, you know, the Klan and the neo Nazis and all that, they didn't have not one mask on. Nope. They didn't try to hide their identity. Nope. And that's how they feel about it. And they felt that they were brazen and bad enough, and they were bringing weapons. And to me, if you march, if you get a permit to march in any parade, it should be peaceful march. You should not have any weapons at all. That's where the police makes their mistake. And the people, the city council, whoever uh, gives those permits out, they should not allow a peaceful demonstration supposed to be something that is peaceful. And if you got an AK-47, that's not a peaceful demonstration. You're looking for trouble. I, and I, so I blame, I, the, I blame the authorities for that. But uh, that's just, you know, part of it. And, and, you know, I just look at all of this stuff and people just shaking, breaking their hand and figure out what's happening. This has been going on for a long time. This is nothing new. It's just that the people that been doing all creating all the havoc like the, the skinheads and all of that they just coming from underneath their rock they, they feel brave now they feel brazen and if anything happens to trump if he if he has to resign or leave leave office because i think that Mueller is getting close to him and i think he feels the heat i think these people will ri- rise up and try to do something stupid and create a, a, a calamity here in the united states because that's how much they, they you know they're looking for somebody like that it happened in germany i don't see why it can't happen here in the united states well, I want to believe that that's not possible, but I, okay. I will I will tell you this. Uh, listen, I, I you know I, notice what I said. I want to believe that that's not possible. I believe. It. Okay, yeah. but I'm with you. Uh, but here's what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. If President Trump makes it to January, I think it will be uh, incredible, because I think they are on him. Like, you can't believe, and it's just a matter of time. It is just a matter of time. My timing may be off, but it's just a matter of time. There is just stuff coming out of the woodworks on a daily basis, and I don't know how he is going to be able to overcome. Now, those people, that is his supporters, 
who are listening to me right now are saying, there he goes, that left-wing dogma. Well, you know what? Forget the left-wing dogma. If you're just reading and looking and listening to what's going on, there's a whole lot of stuff that's being stirred up in the pot, and I don't know how he's going to get out of it. And and, and, and on the, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, and this is the thing that, uh, especially with my Christian conservative friends, he lies on a continuous basis. He lies like we breathe. And I have never in my lifetime seen where the press calls the president a liar because he does it so much even the press calls him a liar. Yeah, that used to never happen. That would never happen. They might say he mischaracterized or he bent the truth, but he just lies. And he has, he does it with no conscience at all. But that, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be talking to my congressman. I'm going to go over to his little rally he's having over here early in the morning over at the Port St. Lucia Community Center across from City Hall, uh, 8.30 in the morning. And, I'm, you know, he, you know, he prides himself on serving, protecting this country. I want to find out more about him. Let him know that I'm a veteran also. Who, that mass? That, uh, I, I, I put up my right hand to protect and serve also, but I didn't give in to uh, somebody that's trying to divide this country. So I want to see where he's coming from tomorrow. Who's that, Mass? Yeah, but that's right, Mass, yeah. Okay, he's going to be where at? At the community center there right across from City Hall here in Portland. Okay, City, all right, good. good. I'm glad to you. Morning. And that's at what time? Tomorrow morning. I think it starts around, it said it in the, in the, when I got the email, it said 8.30. Okay, good. He's making the rounds. He's going to be there for a couple of hours, and then he's going to move on to do it. And yeah. Probably West Palm. You know? Yeah, we're going to postpone but, uh, swap shop and cover and, it. And I just want to... Uh, I want because what he has do he has the practice of uh, having a few rows in the front for veteran and veterans and so I'll be uh, I'm gonna try to get right up get there early so I can get up in the front. Okay. And uh, I want to ask him. I'm going to really challenge him, challenge him and see exactly, you know, what he believes in because it seems like he's going uh, you know lockstep with with uh, Trump and and Ryan and them instead of being you know, protecting the vet- veterans. Uh, they want to privatize. They want to take the veterans administration out of the from the government. And, they privatize it. Yeah, I can't understand how a man whose life was saved by the VA, uh, by the you know the, the, the Department of, uh, of the OD and then the the, the VA uh, would go along with something like that. I can't. I just can't figure out any veteran who, who uh, lost you know lost limbs or almost lost his life and uh, got the best treatment that anybody can get in this country when it comes to medical attention, especially guys that get hurt on, and comment on, on, on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, they have, they have the means and they know how to do it. They have the expertise and they don't, they don't fool around. So I can't, I'm just one, I'm going to see what what's on his mind. Well, that'd be good. Or he's going to have to make an answer or he's not going to answer it. So I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. All right. Okay. Jay, thanks for sharing <laughs> that with us. Okay. Okay. Anytime. Take care. Y'all. All right. We're going to take a little break. And uh, I'm looking for your thoughts, too. That number is 3401590. That's 3401590. Don't touch that dial because we'll be right back with the African-American scene. Serving the entire Treasure Coast, Howard Insurance & Associates in Port St. Lucie offers a wide variety of insurance products, along with the very best customer service. Whether you're shopping for the best homeowner's coverage at the most affordable value, contact Rudy Howard's team at Howard Insurance & Associates. If you need coverage for your vehicle, call Howard Insurance & Associates, 343-9878. That's 343-9878. Maybe you're planning to add a boat, motorcycle, or RV Call Howard Insurance and Associates for your free quote at 343-9878 and get the coverage you need at a cost that will fit your budget. For home or business, auto or recreational vehicle, choose Howard Insurance and Associates, 600 Southwest Darwin Boulevard, Suite 206, Port St. Lucie. And for your free rate quote, call them at 343-9878, 343-9878. 
The Miami Dolphins play on WPSL. The Dolphins hit the road to Philadelphia Thursday at 7 with pregame at 5 on WPSL. The Tampa Bay Bucks are home to the Cleveland Browns Saturday night at 7.30 on WSTU. The Dolphins, Bucks, and rest of the NFL are brought to you by Trajico's Lexus of Fort Pierce, Trajico's Toyota of Stewart, Bar Fusion Tap House in Port St. Lucie, Nice Air, cooling the Trajico since 1973, the Quit Dog Foundation of Martin County, St. Lucie Draft House, Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd, Stimmels of Stewart, Max Ducky. Stewart Attorney and Dave's Diner of Fort Pierce. The Treasure Coast Lexus Studios, your home for Rudy Howard's African American scene on WPSL. Treasure Coast Lexus US 1 south of Midway Road. And now, back to the African American scene with Rudy Howard. Uh, we got a caller, but let me read this little piece of information to you. Uh, so don't hang up. I'm going to be right with you. There was a uh, gathering by members of law enforcement in New York City in support of Colin Kaepernick. And uh, the person in charge said, and quote, as members of law, law enforcement, we confirm that the issues he is saying exist in policing and throughout the criminal justice system indeed exists, Sergeant Raymond said of Kaepernick. This, now, these are police officers now supporting Colin Kaepernick. And there was over 80 police officers in New York supporting him. And here's a, the other statement that he made. They said he disrespected law enforcement. Sergeant Raymond said, well, I'm law enforcement, and he didn't disrespect me. Give that some thought, and we got Carlos on line one again. Yes, sir. I, I know you say I, I know you say that I'm a I'm a hit and run, but I, I'm, I'm at work, so I got I got to make it quick. That's okay. why I, I I ask the questions and I turn I hang up so I can listen to. Him. I I I, I listened to that last caller. It's it's kind of funny how he could remember a, a black individual that got shot by a white guy, but he couldn't name me one one young person, one young black African American who got shot in Chicago. They said that since the eight years that Obama was in office, more kids in Chicago died than in, than, in Af- than we had in Afghanistan and, and Iraq put together. That's and, not and, true. We, we, that's, that's what they, that's. What that's they not that true. That, 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 that's one of them Alex Jones things. But we can't, but we can't name one person, one of those young kids, but we can name the one that got shot by a white guy, but we can't name one of those kids that died. All right, well, I gotta go. I got. I gotta hang up. I got. I gotta listen. Bye. Okay. Well, well, let me just say this: the, Alex the, the the Chicago thing is really tired. Uh, they the conservatives bring up Chicago, like Chicago is representative of, of all the black people in the United States. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's not. There's other black communities in the United States other than Chicago. Now, Chicago seems to have a particular problem when it comes to uh, murders. And and I'm going to tell you something you don't know. And this is something I know because when I was in the corporate world, I used to do a lot of traveling. And one of my spots that I traveled was Chicago. And I used to stay at the Omni in downtown Chicago, which at that time was probably about five blocks from Cabrini Green. Now, you've probably never heard of Cabrini Green. Cabrini Green, which is on, I can't remember which side of Chicago it is, was a huge apartment development uh, housing place in Chicago. They had that section, and then you had the other section of Chicago. So the two factions were separated. You had the one section that was in Cabrini Green, and I can't think of the name of the other section, that was in the other part of Chicago. They tore down Cabrini Green. When they tore down Cabrini Green, and I'm not making excuses, I'm giving you factual information. When they tore down Cabrini Green and displaced those people, they pushed the factions together in competing in in the same area. And they're in was the beginning of the problem. Now, you know, most people are not going to know that. And if there's anybody listen that knows Chicago, they'll tell you what I'm saying to you right now is absolutely true. 
That was the start of the huge problems in uh, Chicago when they tore down Cabrini Green. But anyway, I, I don't like the Chicago thing because they, they say, uh, as Carlos said, and the, here's the number one statement that gets made. 90% of all the African Americans in Chicago get killed by other African Americans. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's true. Now, watch this. 80% of all the white people that get killed are killed by other white people. I I don't hear anything about that. That's a fact, too. You can look it up. 80% of all white people that get killed get killed by other white people, not by black people. So when you make that that analogy that, well, all the people in Chicago are getting killed by other black people, what about all the white people that get killed by other white people? That's a bogus argument. I so can, so Chicago's not really a, a racial issue like it is in some other areas, right? Yeah, well, it, the, the point that I'm trying to make is they, they hold up Chicago because it's an it's a, it's a easy target because of the uh, murder rate among black people. But there's other cities throughout the United States that have large black populations where that's not the case, Okay. Uh, and so just to hold that up, that that's the the whipping boy, Chicago. I can whenever I'm I'm losing an argument, I can hold up Chicago and say, uh, don't complain about the police because black people are killing black people in Chicago. Oh no, that's a, that's a bogus argument. You know, that's not the only city in America where black people live. So let me get that because that that's that's, that's one of the. That's one of those things that really irritates the heck out of me. Uh, now, l- l- let me get back to this issue that I was talking about earlier. Cracking down on people's right to stand up. Now, first off, uh, the president has said something, and and this is a dog whistle if I ever heard one. Now, I want you to listen to this very carefully, what he said. They're trying to destroy our heritage, what does that mean? They're trying to destroy our heritage. Who, who, who's they and whose heritage? Yeah, well, yes. Well, that's what the president said. The president they said are trying, they uh, are trying to destroy our heritage. Is he talking about like the KKK? No, 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 he's talking about the, the, the left. The left is oh, trying to destroy okay. our heritage. And we cannot allow them to destroy our heritage. I, I, I guess that, that is referencing the monuments and statues, which we're having a big debate about. Oh. Yeah, which was that's one of the— That's not going to get better soon either, by the way. No, it's not. And that's one of the few things that Steve and I have ever disagreed on in all the years that I've been talking to him on, on, on this uh, show. Uh, and, and, and let me tell you why. Because the background of these monuments and statues is really problematic. If the statues and monuments were built shortly after the war to commemorate the people that fought and died for the Confederacy, uh, I would probably be inclined to support uh, that they not be disturbed. But that's not what happened. No, some of them were created later to intimidate people. Absolutely. Well, first thing that happened is after the uh, destruction of Reconstruction and, and the introduction of Jim Crow, they erected those statutes and monuments as, as uh, earmarks to let black folks know where their rightful place is. Now, you can look it up. I don't want you to believe me. You can look that up. That That's a fact. Most of those statues and, and things were, were built in 1890s and later. Some of them were not even built until the 50s. And uh, some of the statues were built in areas where the people that they're honoring on the statute has no connection to that particular area at all. But they were built as a middle finger to 
the government was telling them that they had to integrate and they had to change their way of life. And that was their way, in many instances, of protesting uh, those developments. Now, if that's the reason those statues were built, they got no business being there. They should come down. Now, then, and somebody said, well, here's the argument I've heard recently. Well, what about Washington and Jefferson? Uh, they were slaveholders. Yes, they were. And uh, Jefferson would have been convicted of child molestation and rape today for what he did back then. But they did make a meaningful contribution to the development of this country. And I wouldn't advocate the destruction of Jefferson or Washington's monuments or statues. Uh, that That's not right because they have made a meaningful contribution. But when we celebrate Robert E. Lee, he was a treason. He was guilty of treason. He tried to overthrow the government. And we're, we're out here celebrating him? That, 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 that just is just stupid. It makes no sense at all. So that is uh, my position. So when he, when he r gives that dog whistle, destroying our heritage, what does destroying our heritage mean? What, what are you trying to save? What heritage is being destroyed? Tell me, what, what heritage is being destroyed? Oh, we have Carol on line one. I always love it when I have a female <laughs> caller. Hi, Rudy. How you doing? I'm um, great. By the way, I agree with you on the monuments. Now are you going to fall off your chair? No. <laughs> I got a seatbelt on him. <laughs> <laughs> but I disagree with you that Trump is particularly divisive. I understand why you say it, but I disagree with you. And I also disagree that Obama had no scandals. Just so you know. So, but on the you mean like Pizzagate? On the no, oh, okay. you know no, that's no, not up to no, all no. The time. You, you, well, Carol, I didn't you, like Hillary, but even I thought that was ridiculous. And I actually left some of, some of my Facebooks when they kept going on about the ridiculous stuff like that. No, um, Obama did lie, but he was very effective at getting beards to lie for him. <laughs> and I'll bring up Libya and the rice thing and the was it a video thing and and then a lot of scandals that were under Obama's administration we attributed to Hillary, which is why I don't believe the Democrats should have nominated Hillary. I think they would have had a better chance with anyone else. But uh, um, uh, I won't I won't I won't particularly argue that with you. But but let I'm me when, saying, I, when, I, know, when I say I, I, I voted for Obama in 08. But by 2010 and 2011, I went no, 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 no. Okay, so tell partly me, partly not what, what he what, ran on, and what what did he, what did he do that turned you off? Now, well, first first of all, like let me let me, he, let me let me let me tell you about this thing with the uh, doctor. Okay, because I had this discussion recently on Facebook with somebody. He technically didn't lie. Now uh, he he did not. Now, now hear me out. Because I'm, I'm listening. Okay, he didn't lie, because when he said you can keep your doctor, what he didn't say was, your doctor would have to agree to do business with I the plan. I remember when you were saying this. Okay. You were saying this a few weeks ago. I just didn't call in that night. Okay. Well, that's 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 the truth. So if the doctor had agreed to do. The costs were going to lower this and that and the other. Okay, wow. And what I found with Obamacare is uh, basically if you were very poor or very sick, you love Obamacare. For anyone else, you might not. And if you're Congress, it doesn't matter because they voted themselves right out of it, which I thought was disgusting in the beginning. Um, one thing I felt like he lied compared to what he comp campaigned on is what he campaigned on was single payer. And while I understand that means rationing and all that, I'm actually for single payer. Um, do you know why he didn't do ration? Do you know why gonna, you know why he didn't do single payer? The Democrats were going to uh, uh, veto it, so he 
kept it out. And I think he, I think he should have allowed the vote because that is what he campaigned on. Well, let me let me tell you why he didn't do single payer. He didn't he do. We weren't ready. No, he he didn't do single payer because him being the idealist that he was in the beginning thought that if he came up with a system that was consistent with some of the conservative values, i.e. Romney care, and many of the parts of Obamacare came from the Heritage Institute, he thought he would be I able... I didn't vote for Romney either. Well, okay. <laughs> he, he, thought, he thought that he would be able to convince the Republicans to support the health insurance reform. That's why he didn't go with single payer. So he, he shouldn't have taken that out of the bill himself before oh, there was vote on it. But he tried. He thought. Now you can criticize him for having this thought, and and I and I would not be opposed to that criticism. His thought was, if I go down this this road, if you remember how he was with Susan Collins and he was trying to convince Susan Collins to support it, and she support got it out of committee for him. He really believed that if he went with what was Romney care in Massachusetts, that he would be able to get Republican support, and so it would be a a bipartisan piece of legislation. I I understand that, and I still say he should have let that be a fallback position and not taken it out before a vote. Okay. All right. right. Um, And and, and I feel that that he betrayed— a lot of his constituency when he did that. And a lot of people still want single payer. And they think Obamacare is close to it. And it only is if you're very destitute or had an, a pre existing illness. Other than that, people are paying a lot more with a, a lot higher deductible. And the end result is not that many people are happy with it. Well, let but me. He had, he had also Fast and Furious, and he had. All kinds of Fast scandals. And, they just didn't quite touch him. Fast and Furious okay, started under also, Bush. Yes, I know. A lot of things yeah. started under other presidents, including the division of our nation. Black Lives Matter didn't start because Trump got elected, for example. No. Okay. And what I found with Obama being divisive is as soon as something happened, he immediately started – attacking it as a racist issue, and never came back and corrected it when facts portrayed that they weren't. And You never, uh, Carol, I defy you to show me one time where he called an issue racist. I defy you to point that out. I will, and I will, I will say I apologize. He didn't use those those words, but to me that's what he was saying, okay? White cops shouldn't this, the white cops shouldn't that, you know. But anyway, there there were a lot of scandals that he was effective at having beards that that they didn't quite touch him. But like I said, a lot of them were blamed on Hillary because she was the Secretary of State. You know, the Russia reset, everybody blames Hillary, but hey, Obama was at the head of that pillar. He He was the helm. He was the... The, the commander in chief at the time, and yet we want to blame Hillary for selling uranium to the Russians. And part of part of the reason why that's her scandal instead of his is because we wonder if some of those campaign contributions or foundation contributions she got weren't ways of paying off. Uh, Iran getting billions of dollars for things that didn't really change the story too much, happened very late in his office, so he's not being blamed for it too much. Well, he didn't didn't give them any money. It was their money. (laughs) Did you you know that that was Iran's money? Uh, Yeah, I knew that, but I also knew that the reason we were withholding it for decades was because, you know, it's, it's the same thing as trying to deny... China, this and that, and having all these sanctions, uh, that's basically the same principle. Yes, And I realize that what happened, for for those who don't, what happened with Iran is they sent in big payments in order to buy jets that they never got. 
okay? And we held on to it because we considered them bad actors. That's correct. So we considered it their money. But here's the thing. Obama didn't go through publicly to say how he was going to give them back their money. He did it on the sly and under the table and plain loads of cash and things like that. And that's kind of scandalous considering our stance had been for decades. When I, when, I, when, 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 I, when, bad actors. when I say scandal, though, there is, was no he convicted— He wasn't a skirt chaser. Well, he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't convicted. His and, administration was not convicted of okay. any scandals. Hold, hold on, though. Hold Convi- on, though. When I say convicted, he wasn't— Because I don't believe they were properly investigated either. And let's go with the Martha Lynch meeting on the— Carmack with Bill Clinton thing, you know, there's there's a lot of questionable acts. But Carol, and if, you're if right, they... he wasn't convicted. Okay. But people on my side say, yeah, well, a lot of these things weren't properly investigated either, and that's the reason why I say he was effective at creating beards. Now, on that case, you might say that he's smarter about it than Trump because Trump isn't very effective. At getting beards, and in last night's speech, he's like, they can attack me all you want, but when you attack the constituency, you're attacking Americans, and that's wrong. And I admire that of Trump. That's one thing I admire him about, okay? Yeah, but what what, what, what he's attempting to do, which is where uh, I, I really have a problem with, he's trying to discredit the media— And I believe they should be discredited, and this is why. I was a big fan of CNN and MSNBC. Those were my shows. Those have been my shows for decades, okay? But during the election campaign, they'd play a 15- or 20-second snippet and then have hours and hours of the conversation, and I'd flip through, and they all were saying the same thing. And then one time by accident— I happened to be on C-SPAN and caught one of his full speeches and decided to listen in, even though I couldn't tolerate Trump. I went, all right, and he looks like he's getting closer. And this was this was before he was actually nominated. And I listened to his speech, and then I went back to my CNN, and what they were getting out of it was not what I heard at all. And I went, wait a minute. So I went to MSNBC. And what they were saying was not what I got out of it at all. And then I went to Fox, and Fox said, this is what they're saying on here and here, and this is what he actually said. And I went, whoa. Okay. You know, and I did that for about a good six months before I realized CNN and MSNBC in particular were lying to people or severely misleading people. On what he is, and even even like his his speech on Saturday, I wasn't satisfied with it. I didn't feel he went far enough, but the way they made it sound was far from what I got. Okay, and I don't I don't see where anything he has said is particularly divisive, unless you wish to equate radical Islamic terrorism with the average everyday Muslim, and I don't. I understand there's a difference. So I, when I hear radical Islamic terrorism, I can separate who he means. Now, if you can't, you're going to think he's against all Muslims. But if you can, if you can separate the difference between uh, a, a murderer and just the average Joe on the street, you can understand he means something different. And the same thing with his uh, uh, idea on Mexicans. He was talking about the illegal criminals like the ones who killed Kate Steinle, who are let in over and over again. And if you can't understand the difference between that, and then like I said, you can't understand the difference between a regular criminal and somebody, uh, uh, you know, somebody just on the street. And I can. Now, is he clumsy when he speaks? And Obama wasn't as clumsy? Yes, I'll grant you that. Well, That's not the same thing as being divisive and all that, unless you don't think he's divisive. Let it be like that, Carol. Come no, on, no, I don't. You, think- you're really, you're a really intelligent person, and you, you're going to tell me that you don't think Trump is divisive. Correct. Well, let me just put it to you like this: 
I, I'm going to guess that we're somewhere close in age. And and I 55. My birthday, I got an eclipse. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, All right. congratulations. Well, Thank but I, you. I'm going to say, in your lifetime, the Klan and white supremacists were virtually non-existent. They had disappeared. Oh, my gosh. When they, I moved up to Port St. Lucie and found out who was living here at the time, I almost died of shock. Okay. And the year I got here, they had a, a cross burning in some lady's yard. I don't remember her name. And I was mortified. And then they were uh, allowing a march on US-1 for them. And I wanted to come down and be one of the counter marchers. Okay. Well, okay. Let, let, me, let me just so, say this. So they weren't disappeared for me. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say. Well, I remember that I don't very like well. Them. I, I I remember that very well myself when I moved here. Uh, but but what I'm going to say that he is definitely been divisive. When when he makes a statement like uh, they're destroying our heritage, what do you think that is? That's that's. Well, a, I understand what he means, and I and I and I disagree. Yeah. But what he means is. The history of having those monuments, because those monuments have been in place for over 100 years. And my counter to my other conservative friends is, yeah, but the reason they got put in place was after Reconstruction, they were offering a salve to the, the white supremacist Democrats. Interestingly enough, that's true, and that's but, the but, reason they put those, and that's the reason those put they put those monuments up, and so they did it as an appeasement. And maybe now it's time to appease another party who finds it offensive. And by party, I don't mean political party. I, I mean I understand. those people who find those things, and the reason they're up are offensive. Well, we have and to go, Carol. I, we're all done, Carol. The show right, is over. I'd like, I'd like to thank you so much, Carol. Don't be a stranger. Call in again. I'd like to thank you so much for listening to the African-American scene. God bless and be safe. And I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African-American scene. The African-American scene Wednesday nights at 6.05 on WPSL Port St. Lucie. The talk of the Treasure Coast and the time right now is 7 o'clock.